Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's presentation. Um, how we're going to do this today is uh, I'm going to start out by um, just giving a quick introduction about Structure QA software and an introduction to uh, Dr. Rodriguez and uh, um, I guess kind of uh, where uh, he'll be taking this. After Dr. Rodriguez is done with his presentations, um, I'm going to actually bring up the Structure QA software and uh, do a um, quick demonstration of the software itself and uh, then we'll have a short question and answer session at the end. So basically this all kind of started with Structure QA software, which is a software that Standard Imaging developed. Um, and uh, um, basically the idea behind Structure is that it will take uh, pairs of DICOM RT structure sets, um, it will import them and then evaluate them uh, both in a qualitative way and a quantitative way. And the idea here is that a primary set gets created by an expert of the user's choosing, and then a secondary set is going to come from uh, either the, the subject, um, whether that's a person or an auto contouring tool or whatever, that is being trained or tested. So basically how it works is that on import, each ROI uh, that is in the, structure di the DICOM structure set gets voxelized into a three-dimensional structure uh, made up of one millimeter voxels. And then the key to the software is the ability to create um, metrics uh, that can be used to compare each one of the ROIs to each other. And um, then once the calculations are done, regions of regret are used to visually illustrate where structures are alike or different. And then the metric scores provide an objective comparison value, um, which, are, which is really helpful if you're using that as an evaluation tool or as a teaching tool. So this is kind of just an illustration how the software works. Um, if you have uh, your primary set here, and then this is your secondary set, the software is going to compare the two. And as you can see right here, we've got three voxels that are in the secondary set that were not in the original set. We've got a few missing voxels, so this one was in the original set and it's not in the secondary set. And then anything that matches up is going to be shown in green. And then the software is going to take any voxel that is not alike and it's going to penalize it based on a function of the distance away from being correct. Uh, the metrics, as I said, is kind of the key to the software. Um, basically, the user gets to determine how the, the points get taken off for each ROI um, based on that distance to agreement. You can create um, uh, metrics that are based on a linear um, penalty where it increases based, you know, strictly linearly on distance. You can do an exponential increase based on the distance. You can put in forgiveness regions. So if you want to say that, you know, anything within a millimeter is good to go, you can do that and no points will be taken off. And also you can have separate scoring for whether a voxel is missing or whether there is an extra voxel there. Now, with the scoring, a perfect score equals 100. In other words, every single voxel matches every single voxel. Now, you can get negative scores. Um, basically, that generally means that you have more voxels that are wrong than are right. Um, and then in the software, you do get a histogram that kind of shows you where the differences exist, whether you have a lot of extra voxels that are quite a you know, distance away from being correct or you just have a few missing voxels that are close in. Now, Structure was actually originally designed as um, a commissioning and QA tool for auto contouring systems. Um, how we saw it was that you would use it as a tool so that if you were deciding on an auto contouring system to purchase, you could use it to compare each one and figure out what they're good at. Um, once you decide on a tool, you could use it to commission that tool, basically discover what the auto contouring system is good at and you know, where it might fail, and then you could use that to determine you know, when uh, you were having uh, your planners work with the tool, you'd be able to tell them, okay, you can trust it to do these things um, for these other things and want to make sure that you always do those by hand or that you, you know, touch these things up and so forth. And then, of course, for ongoing QA, like any software product that you would have in um, a radiation oncology department, you'd want to make sure that when the new version of it came out, uh, you'd want to know what changed and you could use the, the structure tool, you know, to easily do that. But as we got using the software when we were developing it, we realized that there was a whole other side to it, in fact, probably even the bigger side of it, and that is to be used as a training tool uh, for anyone involved in the contouring process. And that could be your radiation oncologist, uh, your dosimetrist, um, physicist. Um, and the key to this is, and I think something that 
everyone kind of talks about in the industry, but nobody really has known how to do it up to this point, is knowing you know that all of your plans will start with accurate and consistent contours. In other words, the drawing that you start with is the same no matter who drew it. Um, and up until this point, there was really never uh, a way to do that, a tool that would allow you to do that. And of course, you know, you always have to kind of step back a little bit and ask yourself, you know, is accuracy important in contouring? And I got to thank my friend uh, Ben Nelms for this drawing. You know, let's say you draw this and you plan this. In other words, you've got your target and it's got, you know, excellent coverage and you've got your avoidance structure and you're avoiding it just the way you'd expect. But in reality, those two contours really should be here. And as you can see, your, your uh, target is not getting, you know, a homogeneous dose. Uh, you've got uh, uh, an avoidance structure that's getting, you know, lots of dose in certain places, and, you know, of course, that's not good. So, I mean, accuracy obviously is important. I think we all understand that. And if your ROIs are not accurate, um, you're going to have, you know, these kinds of issues. You know, your plan optimization is going to be compromised because it's going to be optimized to the wrong places. Uh, you could have plan acceptance criteria that is wrong. You could have a doctor accepting a plan based on a DVH, but if the volume that that DVH is based on is in the wrong place, that might not be a trustworthy DVH, and they might be approving a plan that they might not otherwise approve if, you know, the, the, the correct volume was there. And if you're doing IGRT, of course, that can suffer too because um, a lot of times your alignments are based on, you know, those ROIs. So in talking to the industry, we were lucky enough to uh, meet up with Dr. Rodriguez at uh, London Regional Cancer Center, and uh, he quickly realized there was some real power behind structure, you know, as a training tool for radiation oncology residents, you know, which he's uh, very involved with. And he has actually two publications pending. They've been um, uh, actually sent in, and uh, I think we're awaiting, you know, the, the first word back on those. And so uh, we're very excited about that. And uh, with that, I will uh, uh, pass the ball over to Dr. Rodriguez and uh, let him tell us all about uh, the research uh, that they've been uh, doing up in uh, Ontario. So let's see, hey, George, it's all hey, yours. Yep. Does everybody see the uh, title slide? Yep, popped right up. Okay, great, thank you. So thanks, Neil, for that introduction. Um, and as he said, that uh, you know, I have an interest in, in this uh, type of research. In my former life, I was a program director, so, you know, in terms of a lot of the new skills that we're trying to train our residents in, um, contouring is front and center. Um, it is the one thing that, um, that our residents cry for more and more is more anatomy teaching, but also more contouring teaching. And my other, um, my other hat uh, more currently is actually as a clinician scientist. I'm, I'm doing research, and a good proportion of my research, probably over half right now, has to do with the issues regarding contouring. In terms of disclosures, just want to disclose that we do have an agreement here in London between ourselves and uh, and um, and um, General Imaging, sorry, uh, Standard Imaging, with regards to uh, software access for structure. In terms of objectives, wanted to outline some of the challenges with regards to target and uh, organ at risk contouring in radiation oncology. I want to provide a few examples of this observed variation in the literature. Um, to also review some of the evidence with regards to reduction strategies, to try what things have been done in the past in order to try to reduce variability. And I've had some examples um, listed here in my objective slide. Additionally, I wanted to highlight some of the metrics that are used with regards to this type of research. And then ultimately, I want to talk about a couple of projects that we did in concert with uh, Standard Imaging with regards to uh, contouring quality assurance and assessment. So going back in terms of segmentation, um, many of you may recognize this individual, a former uh, Academy Award winner. Um, he's been quite well known for his inconvenient truth, but I, I have an inconvenient truth for radiation oncologists. And it, it basically comes down to the fact that, you know, given all the advances in the last 10 or 15 years with regards to imaging, immobilization, intensity modulated radiation, uh, once again, imaging with IGRT and stereotactic treatment, that the rate limiting step now in terms of further progress may actually be us as radiation oncologists. And the delineation of accurate and consistent target and organ at risks um, is, is, a, is a mounting challenge.